reference, and people probably think that you're just saying that. But look at Mr. Dunn. Mr. Dunn came into the Club World Cup at 1,089th in the world. He made the round of 16. He then qualified for another Foot Champions Cup. And he's now in the top 40, in the top 50 in the world. Pretty much cemented for a playoff spot. And if he has a good playoffs, can push on to the grand final. Another knockout game for him here, losing to Olito in the round of 16. But consistency and composure, getting to events and getting the repetitions in is very much needed for competitive FIFA. Well, it's not the first time that Kurt Adalo's been on the big stage. He did feature in Atlanta, the Foot Champions Cup Stage 3. Did attempt to try and qualify for Dijon in the E-Club World Cup. Unfortunately, could not get past the qualification stages there, but everything looks perfect so far moving forward after, as you said, Richard, he had that one out in it that tour and picked up a big 500 points from the tournament. Lost in the quarterfinals to Umut Kurt Adilo, three goals to one. Hoping to go one step further here, making a top four finish and solidifying himself as the first PlayStation FIFA Global Series master for Foot Champions Cup 5 in Bucharest. There was Coming three next month. vitality players as well, Richard, that did qualify for this event, as you mentioned. And to play alongside Maestro, it is going to be tough. But he did beat him in Swiss. Round four of Swiss. Both players, of course, were in a perfect position. Both winning games. And Kurt Adale won three goals to one over the two legs. Maestro, yes, he's still in the competition. And, of course, we know that Swiss is a different ball game altogether. But he went 5-0, and Richard. He was perfect in day one. But we saw what Pro Hunter did. Perfect 5-0 and in day one on Xbox. Goes out, of course, in the round of 16. The big difference is he's already he, he won that knockout game. He got the result against Hyper. And now he's probably thinking, we've got this unbeaten streak. We can start to push on from here. We might even be able to continue this into a semi-final, into a final. The main thing was the switch was all on one day. Pro Hunter came out day two, lost his game. He's come out first game of day two, and he got the win. So there's no, he was playing well one day and he switched off. This is now starting to become the norm for Kurt Adilo. He's 6 0 in games here in Paris, looking to make it seven. But a very hungry Lucas. Just a word on his team as well, Richard. After the attack does come in from Lucas, he's, as you said, a very strong round of 16 game. Is he going to get this game underway as well? That's exactly what he's going to do. Killing Mbappe, the Frenchman. Getting on the score sheet and continuing this fairy tale story for the German. Killing Mbappe at the near post, smashing it past the goalkeeper. He made it look really, really simple as well. Played down the line, played in field. Mbappe past the goalkeeper, representing Stuttgart, is Lucas. It was a 2 0 victory in the round of 16 against Jago from West Ham to send him into this quarter-final matchup. Didn't concede a goal as well in that round of 16 game. The worst start possible for the Frenchman. His first time on the big stage as well, the main stage here in Paris. Of course, the guys have been playing their Swiss matches and the round of 16 in separate rooms here in the arena that we are in. It's all different when you're on the big stage. Everyone's watching you. The lights are on you, the cameras are on you. Can you deal? Of that extra bit of pressure. Pause it has been queued early doors by Kurt Adilo. And I was going to ask you, Richard, about Kurt Adilo's team. Obviously, a winning formula, you would say, at the moment. Yeah, I mean, he's not dropped a game, has he? Every single match that he's played here at LAN has been a victory. Some of the differences in his squad. Starting a moment, Pele over at left cam. I believe I saw Vieira as well in its centre back. Yeah. We're getting to see Lucas's perspective here. Pretty standard team. Roberto Carlos in at left back. Moments, Rio Ferdinand as his left centre back, accompanying team of the year Van Dijk. It's R9 as a central striker and then Mbappe out wide. But Vieira at centre back, Frankie de Jong in at CDM alongside Rude for Kurt Dialho. I'm not sure if you saw on the other side of that, Richard. Roberto Carlos and Kevin De Bruyne. 
and themselves a starting spot in the team for the German. Certainly can do a job in CDM, can the team of the year Belgium. Interesting that he has been backed. They've always been a strong team in the world of FIFA Esports, have Stuttgart. Players on their books in the past, Dr. Ahano. Players still on their books like Marla. A great person to have as well. Sort of coaching you potentially and giving you warm-up games coming into a tournament. Oh, this is nice. Cardano Pele with the shot. Is he going to get the rebound? He will indeed. Cristiano Ronaldo leaps the highest in the box and was able to connect on that one. Open goal, 1-1. One, one. We're all square with just over 20 minutes played. That is literally just Ronaldo right there. Nobody else, in my opinion. Maybe Van Dijk, but Ronaldo consistently jumping at the back post, leaping highest. It's a mix. The physicality, the jumping, and also, he's got his own player build. The player model that Ronaldo possesses, it just hits different. We've always spoke about it as well, Richard, just the way you can hang in the air. Cristiano out of the just a leap. How high he can jump. He out jumped two defenders there. Just that injection of pace from that left hand side with Pele. That was the key difference in that goal. Will there be an instant reply from Lucas? Virgil van Dijk has other ideas. Really good end to end game, though, here in the opening 35 minutes in this quarter final. Good to see both players sort of going for it as well. There's a lot of space in behind. Isabio, this is nice. Down the byline, inside to one. Oh, it's got to go in. Granted, yes, he's coming away from goal and he's turning and swivelling. But you've got to think that should be rustling the back of the net. You saw there, hug sideline. The quick custom tactic put on from Lucas. See how high and wide those left back and right back are. You can see exactly what he's looking for every single time. Whether it's Cristiano Ronaldo on the far right hand side or the overlapping fullback, De Bruyne, that's a killer pass into it. Sabio just can't get around the corner. As we said, Patrick Vieira being backed as part of that back line. Big, big tackle, big interception. It was good defending, to be honest. He guessed the right way with the first time fake shot. Could have gone left, could have gone right, and did anticipate and read the move well. Dilo. He's a player that has had a breakout. Did enough to get himself on the books of E-Foot de France for this season. Alongside a handful of other French players. And good friend and teammate, Maestro. Remember, he's still in the competition, but he's on the other side of the bracket. He'll be in action later on against Tom. Of course, Fnatic Tom, that is second-ranked player on the PlayStation Global Series ranking. So many big names still in the tournament. Half-time here, Richard. 1-1, one, one, as you said, probably the best half of FIFA we've, we've seen. We saw so the, the knockouts. We saw stats at half-time there. Possession heavy in the favour. But... More shots registered for Kurt Dialo. More chances created. Into the second half we go. It was an early goal from Lucas of Stuttgart. Let's see what this half brings as well. Is it another early goal or a couple of chances to go either way that's going to swing the balance of the match or are we going to go into a, a period of scrappiness I'll say certainly has been end to end FIFA for the first 50 minutes or so is it going to continue to deliver that now Eusebio 
Probably lacking a drag back just there, maybe. On the edge of the box. There's one thing that we saw in the last game over between Olito and MS Tassara. We know there is that skill error and people can't chain skill moves together, but we've seen a few times a player maybe link one or two skill moves together, then take a touch and then repeat the exact same pattern. Probably get two skill moves in before it really kicks in and you lose the ball from doing a skill move. Ronaldo! First time as well. For a second, I thought there was a hole in there and that went straight through. That must have been agonisingly close. Find its way into the right bottom corner there for Kurt Adilo. The point I was making, Richard, is it's like pros have kind of got it nailed down there. They know there's going to be that skill error. They can't chain. We'll see more than three skill moves together if they're even lucky to even get up to three. Yeah, and so they should. They'll know exactly what they can and can't do accurately in around the box. Sometimes you take a risk. Frankie de Jong, still part of the team for Vitality Dilo. R9. Oh, no. Tried to get round. Moments further than as you pointed out, Richard, but guess Great the ball. right way. It's a fantastic ball. Keepers off his line as well. Alison Becker into row Z. Just gets rid of that ball. Yeah, it's a cheap, cheap throw in, to be honest. You can play the ball down the line. You know that your striker's not going to get it, but the goalkeeper AI will just bring him out, punt it into the sidelines. And you get a cheap throw in high in enemy territory. De Bruyne. Taking a second to take this thing out of this game is Lucas, as we said. 336 he does currently sit coming into this on the Global Series rank. is his first tournament he's been able to make so far this year. And he knows how big it is. If he wins this game, whoever wins this game, we have to repeat it, will earn a spot at the next Foot Champions Cup. And a, a big spot as well. Both players European. I think we, we need to start stressing the fact of where the players are from as well. It's a great through ball. Eusebio, we're now dangerous. He can be down this byline. Virgil van Dijk doing enough to clear that away. But back to your point, Richard. There's, there's EU players out there that are watching this at home that have been knocked out in Swiss and are praying that, you know, down the line and other bits of the bracket, South American players can, can take the spots. Well, that's that game we just saw then, Oli Ito versus Desari. There will be players out there that, with Desari getting that spot, from the, the rest of the world region, will be thinking, I've just got a, a better spot of getting into this right now. Desari, who would have taken one of the spots, let's be fair, in qualifying, already has qualified for the tournament, meaning that the spot opens up. Pele, tried to drag his weight through that back line of Vitality Dialo, no way through, and you think back to Breakout performances from the Frenchman. Picked up a move to Vitality this year. Before that was at Epsilon and a bit of a run as well. Back last year in Bucharest. The first LQE following the Continental Cup. That did happen in October. It was in December with PGL. FIFA 19 Masters, I believe it was called at the time. Had a great run, made it into the knockouts. And that's when he really saw himself on the big stage. And it was probably good for him to be able to get some good experience, maybe not at a major, at a, an LQE as it was last year. Get a taste of competing at LAN. And then when you can come into Foot Champions Cup, stage three as it was, he had a good performance there, reaching a quarter final before going out to the eventual PS4 champion. And right here. Only 10 minutes left in the first leg at one apiece. He will be quietly confident going into the second leg. Let's not forget, he's not lost a two-legged matchup in this tournament thus far. As you said, Richard, the only unbeaten player still to remain in this tournament here in Paris. And funny enough, it is a French player. 5-0 in Swiss. Won that game, three goals, one in the round of 16 against Hyper. The Norwegian player from Nordavind. And still, 
is in for a shout to keep that unbeaten record going. On the other side, that is a fairy tale story for Lucas. He will be jumping up many places, even more so if he can win across these two legs. Five minutes left in leg one. There's still a second leg to come up between these two. Well, even just reaching a quarterfinal, he'll be thoroughly impressed. He'll be jumping up at least 250, 280 spots on the Global Series rankings. It was 336 coming into this tournament. Not just 800 points, which is $7,500 if you do win this game. And you move into the next stage of the tournament. Looks like Kurt Adala will play for the last tack of the game. He's done very well with Patrick Vieira, of all people, to try and get down this right-hand side. And Bappe is offside and, unfortunately, will be a three-kick back the other way to Lucas. Lucas will have one last chance if he can get the ball forward. We know quickly that additional time will run out. Just a minute left. Long ball all the way into Cristiano Ronaldo. Might just be able to latch onto that. Two minutes have been played. So it's a case of keep the ball forward. Possession changes hands. Full-time leg one. Still nothing to separate the two. 1-1 one, one the scoreline. And the reason that we see a lot tighter leg ones and games sometimes open up in the second leg, especially in the first 90 minutes, you're playing not to lose. You play to keep the game even, to potentially... If you're going to concede, you'll make sure you only concede one. You, If you feel like you're getting sort of taken control of in the game, expect to see defensive changes. You might think that's extremely negative. It is, but you've got another 90 minutes. You've got a fresh game to turn it around. You see there the votes coming in. 71% of people in the Twitch extension thinking that Kurta Dilo will win this upcoming match. There's no surprise looking at the Swiss round that he did have and still being unbeaten. It must be said, though, that Lucas did actually take out the current PS4 champion from, uh, as we know, Atlanta and Umit. He beat him in the Swiss rounds. Of course, Umit's still in the tournament after beating JRA Line, setting up a quarter-final match against Principe. Don't write Lucas off yet. As we said, he's, he's had a bit of an interesting story. It's like a fairy tale that's continuing at the moment. He's into the quarterfinals. He's currently, as we said, very low down in the Global Series rankings. Only weekend league points to his name. This is a huge, huge opportunity to really bank some big Global Series points. And I think for a lot of these players, Richard, it's just getting that requalification. Winning this game, getting requalified for the next for Champions Cup. We know how difficult qualifiers can honestly be. That will be the main goal for any player that is in the quarterfinals right now. Oh, yeah, it's massively important. This game, I said it earlier, is probably the most... This game probably means more than the semi-final does. If you're in a, a place, points-wise, where you're in a decent sport, you're, you're not really that reliant on points. Financially, if you're in a, a pretty comfortable position, this matchup means more than the semi-final to the final, in my opinion. Because having to re-qualify and go back through qualification online you just don't know what you're going to get you don't know how it's going to go chance early doors for Lucas that caught us off guard it was a a drilled cross into the box I know a very heavy touch it is Lucas kicking from left to right in that Stuttgart kit Kurt Adilo kicking from right to left he looks like he's in a Galatasaray kit of all Of course, no away vitality kit in use. He did use the one in the home game. Did go 1-0 down early doors. Was able to reply later on. And this is where we find ourselves. 1-1 heading into the second leg. Do love seeing all the esports kits in the game, especially when you see on Twitter somebody might pack a big player. And they always walk out in the kit. It seems to be the footways kit is the lucky strip. To get Pat look, can't say it's helped myself. Chance now, R9. Just over the bar. Although that is R9, didn't really tee the shot up as best as if he could. The two chances in the first 10 minutes, the low driven cross into the box, and then that one just there from R9 firing over the goal. It's a, a very positive start. 
from Lucas. Man, you'd probably bet your house on to score in and around the box. Yet to do so. Still plenty of time left in this game. Isabe is making a huge run there. Going to be needed for Mbappe. who will just delay this. Get more players in the box. More white shirts forward. For Lucas. He's taken out some big scalps in the Swiss rounds. Even bigger one in the round of 16 in Yago. He's also coming into the tournament with sort of a, a level of naivety as well. You're not looking at any of the names. It's your first tournament. You're coming in with sort of blindful naivety, I like to call it. You're not worried about anybody else. You're just coming in, you're playing your FIFA. You'll try things. You're not going to play with these negative thoughts that you've had in the past. Oh, you saw it earlier with Gorilla when he was playing against Tex. As soon as he scored that second goal, Tex, Gorilla was thinking, Oh, this could be beautiful. I've got a chance of throwing this game away like I did 18 months ago in Bucharest. That was a thought I guarantee that will have come over his mind. Lucas doesn't have these thoughts because he's not experienced it. Same for any player that's been to a foot Champions Cup final, a semi-final, a quarter final, an E-Champions League event qualifiers in the last rounds to get yourself to a major tournament. As you've always said, Richard, you never lose. It's always a lesson. Just what you do with that lesson. Some players have been able to use it in the right way to educate themselves. And those are the players that we still see on the big stage today. Big names still in the tournament, the likes of Gorilla. MS Tassari, Fnatic, Tom and Maestro, they go head to head. One Swede left in the tournament, that's not Oli Ito, he got knocked out by MS Tassari in that game we just saw. It's Oli Bolli. He's up against Zazinio. That should be an exciting quarter final, of course, all those games to come later on. Here in Paris, we show you every single knockout game. Quarterfinals today, and then we come back for our championship Sunday tomorrow. Semi-finals, and of course, we'll be crowning a new winner. It's a chance. You can see him building up. He's pulling players out of position. That's what he's trying to do. Oh, that's nice. A little reverse Elastico there from Cristiano Ronaldo. Doesn't actually gain him any space, though. Pele. I'll get round Virgil van Dijk. Looks like he's out of right back, but it's not going to matter. It's an absolute unit of a defender is Virgil van Dijk. So tall, so strong, so wide as well. Just one of those players that you want to try and pull your way past, and sometimes it just isn't physically possible. Here comes Lucas. You can see the quarterfinals at the bottom of your screen that we will be following for the rest of the day. Kevin De Bruyne into our night. Has to be patient from the German, waiting for that final ball, that killer pass. Into your Sabi or R9, whoever it is that latches onto it. He knows he's building for that one big chance before the end of this first half. And that is just an awful pass. A little bit aimless down the line. There doesn't seem to be much conviction on it. Just, I often talk about sometimes you will you'll cross the ball in, you'll play a pass because you feel as though you have to. Just like that switch of play right there, it felt like he had to switch the play. You'd rather do something with the ball than just get tackled and lose it. But Carlos now, in the dire moments of this first half, he does make an overlapping run, but he's not using, expect the ball to be switched across, Isabio on the edge of the box, shot from distance, the deflection nearly actually fell into the path of the Frenchman Mbappe into half-time, 0-0, the score is 1-1 on aggregate, 45 minutes left to decide who will be the first name on PlayStation moving into the semi-finals. I just don't think there's many, many players showing for him right now, you saw the run from Mbappe, 
But the players running past the ball, it's just not happening a lot. We, when I used to play um, 11 aside, we had a guy, uh, he played left back for us, and he'd get the ball, and if there were no movement in front of him... I bet he'd just kick it out. He'd just knock it out. <laughs> he'd, just, he'd just launch it long. He'd be like, who's going to show? No one's showing I for me. Just, and I, just, I just don't like those players, just, though, Richard. Yeah, just knock out a play. The thing is... I hate those players. I hate to say it. And what happened? Away possession. No, but what happened? Over the next couple of weeks, we started showing for him. <laughs> yes, Jamie, give me the ball. Give me the ball. That's what happened, and... Right now, you get the ball out wide, you're turning back, you're turning sideways, you're looking for something. We have seen a few players go for that long ball approach, especially from a fullback, funny enough. Little dink up and a long ball down the line. Haven't seen it in this game though yet. 45 minutes left in the second leg. All square at 1 1 at the moment. There's an overlapping run from Eusebio on the left hand side. I do mean Pele, in fact. Sabio in use for Lucas. A lot on this game. Wondering why it is so tightly contested. A lot of money and a chance to qualify yourself for the next tournament in Bucharest. Of course, that happened in April. Foot Champions Cup Stage 5. Last year we're in Singapore for Stage 5. This year over in Bucharest. It's a great threaded through ball down the line. It will be Eusebio. Try and just get this attack moving. Question is, when the ball gets there, where's R9? He's just sandwiched between white shirts in that box. It's Hullet and Virgil van Dijk. He's in the middle of it. That's overall ball side for you. Look how narrow everything is. Compact. And it's the one way that... Pros know how to play when they're attacking. Get the ball into these areas. Where's he going to go on? I tried to spice things up with an elastica and a few step overs. That's, That's a mistake. mistake. It's going to fall back to Pele. Can he find that one more pass and just delaying it again? It lets White Shirts get back into position. As you said, just that negative factor of the overall ball side for those. Watch it. One of the best ways I can describe overall ball side. You've got an ice pop and it's frozen. When you squeeze it at the bottom and you're squeezing the life out of it to get all the the frozen goodness to the top <laughs> when it crunches all together and it just it, it just all comes together in a sort of a messy shape that's what overall ball side is I mean, I mean I'm kind of there with you I visualised it in my head but well, maybe it didn't come across <laughs> too well in commentary <laughs> I mean, if you've got any other analogies I'd love to hear them throughout the rest of today and tomorrow. 25 minutes left. Is there a goal in this game? It's going to be Stuttgart's Lucas. Trying to continue this fairy tale storyline, or will it be the unbeaten streak that is continued from the Frenchman, Kurt Adilo? Certainly has been. <laughs> Standout tournament for most of the French players that are here. Of course, aside from Vitality Rocky, everyone else has progressed through into the knockouts. Mino in a semi-final. Oh, no, back to goal. Kurt Adilo. Again, last ditch defending from Lucas. Right place at the right time, making sure that the shot didn't come in. Nice work from Cristiano Ronaldo. He's actually pulled two players out of position completely. And when a player is using overload ball side, it's a case of trying to pull as many players out to the left or to the right. But if you get the ball over, you have to be quick because otherwise this happens and you're back to square one again. Wanted to find R9, does find R9. And it's De Bruyne or Hullet. Who finds that killer pass? Fortunately, it's not Kevin De Bruyne. Back to the drawing board. A very interesting run made by Andy Robertson. About a 50-yard run forward. He will connect onto that ball. A doubt will be seen across from him. Instead, he'll try and work his way into the box. Does win a throw in for his efforts. Into the pause we go for one of the final changes in the game. Team management now in use. 
30 minutes left. Is it a time just to inject that little bit of energy onto the field? It is indeed, and that's moments Pele coming on at central cam. I wouldn't actually be fully against team of the year Messi coming on either. But it is only Pele being introduced for Lucas with 13 minutes left. Do we have a winning goal? What do you think that is sometimes? You've got the likes of Mane, Messi, and of course Pele. Did you not bring all three of them on? Or is it you just back Players on the pitch that you've got, I would say more clinical. I saw, I mean, I saw Sadio Mane absolutely choke a chance in the game previous with MS Desari and other leads also. You also, you need to justify bringing off R9 and CR7. Can you justify that? I don't think that would stand up in a court of law. It's a, it's a new TV series I want to see. Mike Clubell as a judge, <laughs> judging FIFA court cases. Can we make it happen? What will the cases be? Just like people Time being one nil down or... and then losing a game two one. What went wrong? What's Mike's punishment? What's the sentence? I mean, I'm sure we'll give you opinions on it when we do throw back to the desk after this game has concluded. Will it be with it normal time or will we need to go to extra time? What do we even say? Penalties again. It's happened many times in knockout football. Happened in Atlanta. E Club World Cup. Chance. Many of the big tournaments. Will it fall back to R9? Kurt Adilo. One of his best chances he'll get in this game. Get the ball forward. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo. Frankie de Jong. Back to R9. <laughs> Rich is here getting excited next to me. That's why I'm laughing. He's waiting for a chance. That's we all are at home. Shot. Just take a shot. You've got the likes of R9 in and around the box. We want to see it. Everyone wants to see it at home. That's a mistake. Tell you what, that's it's an awful chance. switch of play. Has to take this chance. Pele, can he get round his man? Virgil van Dijk. He's just a brick wall, Richard Buckley. You can't get past him full time. And we go to extra time again. Two shots in that whole 90 minutes. We did. None were on target. We didn't see a shot on target. We go into extra time between Kurt Dylor and Lucas. It's a bit worried for you then. You're getting... Getting up to getting up for the shot, you were. I just thought we were going to see a shot on target. Fortunately, we still have to wait 30 more minutes to decide if we will go to a penalty shootout or if we're going to see a goal. In fact, it is 1 1, of course, at this moment in time. We know, of course, what is on stake for these two players the money, the qualification, but we just want to see more attacking football. And, of course, hopefully, a few goals in the next 13 game minutes or so. Extra time will be needed, and extra time is underway. I want to see Zlatan off of the bench. Who's got Zlatan on the bench? Someone just bring him on. Like, we've seen Roberto Carlos being woeful at the back post. Just bring Zlatan on. Like, just go full back post cross. So you're not creating any chances down the middle of the pitch. Just stick it out wide and stick crosses into the box. I honestly think no one will expect it as well. Adama Traore, get him on. A Sadio Mane, a Messi, someone that can play out wide with a lot of pace. So it gets into that area and then it's coming in field every time and you've got 14 men stood in the middle of the pitch a nice heavy cross towards the back post and it's past Vieira it's past Virgil van Dijk also how many times do you see the goalkeeper go up to punch it away and just flap it down to the back post where there's space especially the likes of Alisson even though it is team of the year Alisson he's still he's got handmen out of croissants never had that one before Still flaps at the crosses when they do come in and... Just a pastry item, that's all. <laughs> Tips them towards the back post. <laughs> oh, stop it. Free kick on the edge of the box. 20 have a yards shot. out. We have seen them go in. Direct from it. Nearly 100 minutes on the clock. R9 to play short into Cristiano Ronaldo. Where's that shot going to come in? Kurt to Dilo. It's just he's delaying it so much. We understand he wants to keep possession, but doing so... He's going to go backwards. So many white shirts. And now back behind the ball. Look at the mini-map. There's not a white shirt forward. No, no, I knew he was controlling now. He's the highest player forward. <laughs> the 
<laughs> Nearly a half time and extra time. If that was me, of course, I'm not a pro. But you're hitting that directly from the free kick. Not even directly, Richard. Just play it short. And just have a shot. Players that can finesse it in from the edge of the box. Just have a dabble. It's worth having a go at goal. We've seen him go in. Added timer, just two minutes in the first half of extra time. Pele into Sadio Mane, he's going to leap back up into Pele again and Vieira. Through and his worth in its centre-back with 15 minutes away from a dreaded penalty shootout. Are we going to see a goal in the next 15 minutes? Probably, yes or no? Probably not. Um, <laughs> I want to, should we just start making a rule, if it, if nobody's had a shot on target throughout the entire 120 minutes, both players are eliminated? I mean, I don't know how that's going to go down. Well, who goes through then? <laughs> just just you get a bye in the semi-finals, straight into the final. <laughs> We've not had a shot <laughs> on target in 105 minutes. What were the two shots on target in the first leg? The first leg had chances. That's why I got excited. <laughs> Peaked you, too early, still trying to calm me down. too early, son. Didn't you say there was going to be goals in this game? <laughs> I jinxed it again. <laughs> Stop jinxing it. I just banged my funny bone as well. 15 minutes <laughs> left. Rich is getting carried away. We need something to spice this game up. Or are we going? So a penalty shootout to decide who will re-qualify themselves. Four foot Champions Cup stage five in Bucharest in April. And get 800 Global Series ranking points guaranteed to the name on the rankings. There will be one chance. One big chance. Who will it fall to? Will it be Lucas now? Chance. Oh, what a save, save Alisson. Oh. You might not have seen him in action for a long time in this game, but he certainly is there and waiting and ready. He did really well to build into the chance, did Lucas. I think he probably panicked because he knew that he was going to press circle in, inside the box. At the near post, Allison doing the business. The best chance we've seen all game. Five minutes left, that's surely got to give him something. Coming forward, that bit of confidence, Lucas knows that he can break down his opponent. Three minutes left. Has to get the ball forward unless he wants to go to a penalty shootout. He knows that he can get in. He can create a chance. He's inviting pressure. That's what he's doing right now. What he's trying to do. He's trying to just disrupt Kurt Adilo's team. Amount of red shirts for. We know that he's going to be pressing that ball. Long ball does go forward. Advantage played. It goes back for a free kick. Added time. Won't be any longer than a minute. So really, get the ball forward, keep it in. Kurt Adilo's half, we've already played a minute of additional time. Has to go forward, has to get the ball forward, unless you want to play for a penalty shootout here. It's just too negative, there's the long ball forward, it's into the keeper's hands, unless R9 can try and get that in the air. Penalty shootout to the side, a place in the semi-finals. Simply not enough chances created. Up steps, Lucas first. Which way is he going to go? Down the middle. Sadio Mane will get the penalties underway. Vitality, Kurt Dilo stepping up to the spot and it's saved. Advantage Lucas after two. Chance to move forward again down the middle. Pele will take it and Pele will score. Really a must score penalty right here for Kurt Dilo and it's saved. Will it be three out of three for the German? Cristiano Ronaldo goes right and will score. Miss this. It's game over, it's tournament over for Kurt Dilo. Which way will he go? It's saved! We go to a penalty shootout to decide a spot, not just in the semi-finals, but in the next foot Champions Cup. And it's the story of the Swiss again. You have a perfect Swiss, but knockout football is a completely different story. Lucas with this fairy tale story just continues here in Paris. He might be 336th in the Global Series rankings. It doesn't matter now. He keeps his nerve from the spot, saved three penalties, scored three penalties, Richard. He moves on to the semi-finals. I mean, Kurt Adilo, you, you've had three penalties. You've, you've missed all.